everyone, it's Bree Firth here, and today I am creating another light up card with the One More Sleep stamp set from Clear Be, Be Salted and um, using some sticker lights from Chibitronics. So, first, I am going to ink blend the background. I'm creating kind of a night sky. I have a kind of, I've used a pencil to draw a half moon shape where I'm going to be placing the stamp set. And now I'm taking some post it note tape and masking off the bottom of the card. This part isn't necessary because we're going to go and ink blend it black afterwards, but I just wanted to uh, have a place where I could put my fingers and uh, an area where I can just not do too much ink blending, just go over it with the black. So I'm starting with the Blueprint Sketch Distress Oxide ink, and I'm trying to stay out of the center area, but I'm trying to have the darker shaded areas towards the outside and then work towards the center to create like kind of a, a light blend into that light blue cardstock. Now I'm moving on to Wilted Violet Distress Oxide Ink to give it uh, the night sky of a purple tint. And then I'm moving on to my last, last color of Black Suit. And I want to be very gentle of how much Black Suit I use on the outside because I want it to the sky to stay pretty blue. And now I'm coming back in with the Wilted Violet and blending that black suit out, and then I'm going to blend out the other colors with the Blueprint Sketch. And once again, trying to leave that center area, that uh, light blue shaded cardstock. So I'm peeling off the masking tape, and now I'm replacing it right above the mast line so that I can come back in with my black suit Distress Oxide Ink and Ink Blend that black, that bottom half, just in black. And the, the masking tape didn't really want to stick down after it's been used once, but if the black gets on the bottom of the night sky, it's not a big deal. I want kind of a, just a smooth blend here. So now when I peel off the masking tape, there's a black section at the bottom of the card, and then the night sky. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and place my stamp set that I've already, I've used Pumice Stone Distress Ink to kind of get some shading on the moon, but I stamped the town and the moon in some black pigment ink and heat embossed it with clear embossing powder. And then I used YO2 to add some yellow lights in the houses on the town line there. Like all the windows are on in the houses. And we're going to glue that right in the center of that uh, sketched half circle shape. Try to straighten the town out as much as possible on the card. So I decided to come back in with my Distress Sprayer to add a little bit of texture to the night sky. And it's just using plain water, and then I use a paper towel to soak up the excess water. And it pulls some of that Distress ink off the background. So now I'm peeling off the masking tape again, cleared off the area, and now I can go ahead and I place my, I used uh, some stitch numeric die cuts from Lawn Fawn to die cut out the year 2022, which was pretty easy since I only had to use one zero and the rest were twos. And I'm using some uh, less tacky tape to make sure that the letters are kind of lined up in a straight line. It's For me, this is the easiest way to place letters or numbers uh, whenever there's multiple die cuts. And then you just have to be very careful when peeling uh, the tape off of the die cutted die cut letters or numbers because sometimes it will pull the letters back off. So I'm working very slowly here and peeling that tape back while holding the numbers in place. So I'm using the Happy New Year uh, sentiment and I already stamped that in black pigment ink onto the moon and then I went ahead and I already colored up three uh, animals one brown dog one orange cat or it can be a fox and then a gray cat as well and I kind of want it so that their tails are hanging over the letters a little bit but not covering up too much and I'm gonna place them and glue them just towards the center there and now I'm going to use the fireworks stamp images from the One More Sleep stamp set to stamp some gold fireworks in the sky. Like it's a New Year's celebration. 
and I'm using my embossing buddy to remove any static that might be on the card or areas that might stick to the embossing powder. And then I'm going to pull out my mini Misty so that I can place the fireworks exactly where I want them. And I want them towards the top half of the card, up, up above the move, kind of in overlapping the moon. So I'm going to put my magnetic bars so that it's not going to interfere with uh, where I'm placing my fireworks. And I want the fireworks just slightly overlapping the moon. The nice thing about using a MISTI when uh, embossing is that you can stamp multiple times if you need to uh, to get a clear impression with the embossing ink. So I'm going to stamp with the bigger firework one more time up in the top left corner. to add one more firework into the night sky. So I use my MISTI to uh, determine the placement of the firework and then stamp it onto the top corner. Okay, so now I am pulling out my coffee filter and my gold embossing powder. And I'm going to dump the gold embossing powder right into that coffee filter on, to catch all the excess. And I'm tapping it to try to get off all the excess embossing powder. And now I'm going to heat emboss. I sped up this part of the video uh, just because heat embossing is pretty uh, repetitive. And as you can see, once the embossing powder is activated, it becomes this metallic gold, which is really pretty. So I'm using my picker tool to, and the piercing edge to poke holes right in the center of these fireworks. And that's where we're going to place our sticker lights. So the lights will shine through right in the center of the fireworks as mentioned. And now we can go ahead and these are the sticker lights that we're going to be using. Uh, the sampler pack is really nice because it provides stickers for all the colors. And as you can see, uh, the colors in these stickers are the yellow, reds, and blues. And we're going to be using the yellows, three of the yellows. So that's why I have three little groupings of stickers out there. And I'm just making sure that this lines up perfectly with the backing, with the background. And I'm going to use a pencil and I'm going to trace the holes that we pierced onto the background paper so that we can make our circuit. And down at the bottom, I'm kind of tracing where I want the push mechanism to go. And that's where the battery is also going to be located. So I'm going to use my pencil to trace the battery so we can build the battery holder in that location. And I'm actually going to double up on the cardstock to make it a little thicker. You got to use some creative techniques to account for the height of the battery. And I use 2032 coin batteries just because it has a much brighter um, effect on the lights, which but they are a little thicker. The 2016 batteries are not as thick, so you don't have to account for the height as much. So I'm going to glue that layer onto the back of our background paper. And then I'm going to use a roller and I'm going to create just a square shape kind of around the battery. 
and we're going to cut that area out. So the battery is actually going to be placed right on top of the card base. So we want the cutout area just thick enough so that we can slide the battery in. And we're going to take some scissors and cut right on those uh, lines. So um, I'm using a, a scrap piece of the 110 pound card stock to kind of create a flap that when you press down on the, uh, the flap, it'll cause the lights to light up. And I also created my card base, my A2 size card base out of the 110 card stock. And I'm gonna just use a bone folder to press down on that crease to get it, to make it a smooth, smoother fold. And like I mentioned previously, the battery is going to be sitting right on the card base. So we're just going to trace that opening onto the card base. And as you can see, the battery will sit right there. I went ahead and I added some black foam tape to the back of our card background. Once again, to account for the battery height. And I'm going to attach that to our card base. And then I'm going to use a pencil to trace the battery so we can start building our circuit. And now I'm using a pencil to kind of draw, trace out my circuit lines. Uh, you're going to have one line going from the bottom side of the battery, which is, and then you're going to have a lot, another line going from the top side of the battery. And I'm drawing a line right around that flap so that it will the copper tape will reach around to the other side and the top side of the battery. And I'm indicating um, that with a negative, a minus sign that that's going to be the negative circuit and then a plus sign to be the, where the positive circuit is going to be. And I'm just tracing along the outside of these dots connecting them uh, to create the positive circuit. And I'm going to mimic that with uh, our negative circuit, but just on the inside of the dot. One important thing to note about creating these circuits is that you can't let the copper tape of these circuits touch. Uh, your lights won't work if the copper tape is touching. So if you're having an issue, make sure that's one of the first things to check is to make sure your copper tape does not touch. So I used some double-sided tape to glue down the, um, the little flap. And now I'm gonna go ahead and use the scrap piece of copper tape that I have and uh, start following our pencil line for the positive circuit. And when you run into like a 90 degree corner, the best way to approach that with this copper tape is to fold it backwards 90 degrees and then run it right over top. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but you can kind of see it happening here where I'm folding it back first and then going right over top where that fold is to kind of create a, a nice smooth angle. It's kind of like if you're a quilter, it's kind of like adding the corner bindings, um, if that's in any reference for you. <laughs> okay. So now I'm just going to take my scoring tool and make sure that the, the copper tape has a smooth connection with the cardstock. This is one of my favorite things to do because it makes the copper tape kind of look really smooth um, and shiny. I don't know why. It's one of my favorite parts of building my circuits. So 
So now we're going to go ahead and build the negative circuit. And I'm going to run that on the bottom side of the battery holder. I'm going to run it up right before uh, we intersect with the positive circuit. Sorry about my head here. Um, and then keep angling it around the inside of the positive circuit. Once again, making sure that these circuits do not touch. Now we can go ahead and add our sticker lights. Once again, we're using the yellow stickers and the way that you can tell that this is yellow sticker, one second while my camera comes into focus, there's a Y for yellow and then there's also a positive and a negative indication. And you wanna make sure that the side with the positive, with the plus sign goes on the positive circuit and then the, si the, mi the side with the minus sign, excuse me, goes on the negative circuit. So that's also an easy mistake to make. So if you have any issues, double check that the plus sign is on the positive circuit and the negative minus signs on the negative. And as you can see, our sticker lights work. So I already added sticker tape to the to the background paper after we built our circuit. And it is okay, sorry, not sticker tape, <laughs> foam tape. And it is okay to place foam over top of your circuit. Just avoid um, the sticker lights and your battery holder mechanism. You don't want to tape that shut so that you can't get the battery in and out or if it interferes with your push mechanism. So I recommend avoiding uh, going over the battery hole, battery area, but you can go right around the outside of the perimeter and then avoid going over the sticker lights. And I'm placing, I'm using some liquid adhesive. Uh, if I was doing this again, I'd probably just use um, double-sided adhesive instead, but I'm placing vellum over the holes so that the holes aren't as noticeable and it's kind of hiding the sticker lights, but once we activate the sticker lights, the light will still shine through the vellum. And I've already peeled off the backing tape on the adhesive so it gets a little sticky on my fingers. We're just going to place that down right over top of the sticker areas. Make sure our lights shine through directly where we have poked the holes. And that is our card base. So now I, I went ahead and I already added some gold sequins and I used a gold shell pen to add a little bit of detail to these stitched numbers. And so when you slide the battery in, it lights up the fireworks. I hope you enjoyed this light up card featuring the one more sleep stamp set with clearly besotted and uh, sticker lights and copper tape from Chippytronics. Check out uh, my more of my videos for more interactive light up cards. Thank you.